Well, welcome to Real Japan, where we watch live-action uh, movies based on anime, manga, and maybe a bit of manhwa. Are there any on the list that are like that? We can watch Priest. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> Part of Anna Bro's creative. <laughs> I'm Josh. I'm Jason. And today we're joined by... Stacy And Laban. Uh, to review um, a underappreciated gem of... The 2000s. Cinematography. Oh. Yes. Well, All of those in, uh, there. We are watching DMC, or Detroit Metal City, a much, much beloved uh, uh, manga that ran from 2006 to 2010. The uh, live-action uh, movie that we were watching uh, came out in 2008, and the anime... Came out at some point in time. We will find this information out later, and we'll fix this in post. <laughs> I think it had to be between like 2008 and 2010 because I watched it when I was in high school. Well, there's an OVA that came out in 2008 as well. Looks like two weeks before the movie came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably just a tie-in to, to sell it up. Yeah. I don't really know how popular this, this show was. I mean, obviously popular enough to get an anime and a uh, live-action movie off of it. Yeah. Clear. Yeah, it came out uh, August 8th, 2008. <laughs> wow, that's a really lucky day. And, yeah. and that's when the OVA came out. The move, the live-action movie came out August 23rd, 2008. Okay. Yeah. So the anime came out... Uh, At the same exactly, time as the movie. At yeah. the same time as the movie. So. That makes, okay, so I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, cross-billing, and I'm sure they... I watched them all at the same time back then, So I, but I didn't realize they all came out at the same time. Yeah, Just well, thought maybe I was late to it and they were already out. So, well, but that's usually how uh, we get stuff over here. Is yeah. that uh, we kind of get in more of a bundle after it's already been popular over there and coming back over. Yeah, that's true. So um, I didn't realize. I mean, one weird thing in here is that the main actor also plays uh, uh, Light, I believe. No, L, L in the live action Death Note movies. Yeah, oh. so the very, Japanese ones. Yeah, and then the Japanese ones, which we have not yet reviewed. <laughs> Or have we? I don't know what the episode order is going to be. <laughs> we probably have. <laughs> I uh, don't remember L being so uh, overly animated. Animated. <laughs> uh, yeah, He's uh, just showing off his uh like his, his range. His range. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, have you seen the live action? No, I yeah, haven't no. seen the live action Death Note except for yeah, the. Yeah, uh, that might be a little bit different. Oh, except for the American one. Yeah, yes. the American one I've seen. Yeah, so now mm. we're dating this episode. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the producer son is saying it's fine for us to <laughs> make references to stuff and date our material. Yeah, because yeah. Whale builds lore for all the listeners. So, like I said, this is a much beloved anime, but I think that more refers to a select core group of uh, uh, diehard uh, fans. I read the manga, I uh, watched the anime, I watched the movie, uh, we own the manga, we own the live action movie, I don't think we have the anime. Yes, we do. No. Yes, diehard fans. <laughs> diehard uh, DMC. Uh, Layman, how much have you seen of this? Uh, before watching this movie for this specific episode, I had seen the movie once when it first came out, and I watched the anime while it was coming out, and I haven't really watched them since, um, but I have fond memories of DMC. Due to, I was in high school when it was coming out. I was playing in a band. And I was like, this is great. It's like things I'm interested in relevant. Keeping with tradition, I know nothing uh, coming into this. You didn't know what Detroit was either. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I know it's a uh, city in Michigan. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. that the title uh, DMC, Detroit Metal City, is a reference to Detroit Rock City. Yes. Uh, yeah. Kiss song. Kiss song yeah. Yes, which is also relevant to this movie. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get into that later. <laughs> the basic premise is this dweeb of a guy who is very insecure. Just but- say it. He's basically like Shinji. Yes. <laughs> He's the Shinji. Shinji from the countryside. Very much a hick. It's like Shinji if Shinji was able to go berserk at will. Yeah. It's true, actually. that That is a good point. Yeah. Yeah, so it's Shinji. <laughs> he goes to college. The impacts don't happen. And he uh, falls in love with uh, Swedish pop music. And that's what he really wants to do. He wants to, uh, what's, the, what's the line? No music, no dreams? Yes. Yes. So he decides to get into some music. Somehow, which is never really fully explained in any of the media formats, uh, he ends up joining a death metal band. After he graduates college. That's when you get a job in Japan. Yeah, of course. But yeah. he plays You Swedish study pop hard, music. you get into college, you leave college, you get a job. Yeah, you become a salary man. You become a salary man. Or a death metal someday. god. 
Sure. Yes. Mm. And yeah, so uh, that's the basic premise. And then he runs across the uh, uh, his college love, and uh, she does not like the music. He she much prefers his sweeter uh, uh, Swedish pop music, um, and it's very much like a gag anime. There's an overarching story, of course, but it's kind of more of a. Uh, um, one of my friends described it as uh, like Archie, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> to where uh, it is like kind of the same, uh, say, uh, the same uh, gag over and over again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where he shows up, has an awkward situation. Uh, the only way he can deal with it is um, turning into his alter ego uh, of uh, Lord Krauser or. Johannes Krauser the second. Yes, there's definitely a lot of Jekyll and Hyde type stuff in this. Exactly, exactly. Um, there is no uh, Johannes Krauser the first. Well, because he killed him. Well, obviously, he talks. I don't. Does he talk about that? <laughs> he talks in his songs about how he murdered his parents. He does say that. That is canon. Uh, yes. But I think it's more the Japanese think it's a cool European name. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, just, just adding the second to something. So he's Johannes Krauser the <laughs> second. Yeah. Like, and he has those like frilly, you know, sleeves, and he's just like a European, like gothic kind of guy. So yeah, so one of my friends said that it's kind of like Archie, where it's kind of the same gag over and over again. Uh, he gets himself into these uh, uh, situations that he can't really deal with, and he's kind of has this. Uh, isn't how would you describe it? Shinji turning into or going berserk for the most part. Exactly. So that's how he deals with his awkward. Uh, they're not even awkward. They're like standard social situations. So I think if anything else, it really talks about uh, Japanese society at this point in time, where he's like, "Oh, I went on a date, and somebody said." Oh, you're thin skinned like gyoza, and then you like the only way you can deal with it is going berserk and like shutting down, overreacting, letting the demons take over. Letting the demons take over, exactly. No music, no dreams. The uh, the movie touches on this. It's kind of an overarching thing, but uh, did that really come up much in the uh, manga and anime? No, <laughs> it was much more of a you know more of a gag driven sort of series while the movie kind of gave it like this hopeful overarching theme if you go to the other sources it's really not like that it's just like hey funny stuff happening and crowds are going crazy and saying bah, 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 kill everybody rah yeah they set up the, like, the plot <laughs> and then the rest of it is gags like right, yeah. okay he goes to school he joins the club he loves some sweet spot music he graduates he's in this death metal band he doesn't want to be that's where it ends. Then each mm-hmm. situation is like the next part is like using that premise. Like, what kind of crazy antics can we get into? Mm-hmm. Having you know mistaken identity or like you know just random yeah. beating people random up or raping like- the <laughs> Tokyo Tower. <laughs> so yeah, like so he meets up with his uh, college sweetheart, uh, and then they do the. I've got to be in two places at once yeah. type of thing. Uh-huh. So she says, "Hey." We haven't talked forever. Let's go to a cafe and catch up. And he gets a phone call saying, you've got to be at a, uh, a signing uh, right now. So he tells her, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in an hour. How's that? And an hour goes by. He uh, gets carried away at his signing thing. And then he starts running back and forth between... Basically, what across the street for the most part? Yeah, I think that's kind of how they're trying to set it up. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's that kind of a standard gag where you're like, "Oh, I'm in one spot, I'm in another one," and then, of course, he has the makeup and the costume and everything else that he's wearing. He's taking it on and off, and then he's just doing it so much that he accidentally shows up at the date full, uh, uh, full Krauser, full Krauser. Yeah, it's like that classic like uh, coin you term take two, now. Two dates to the same problem, and you have to keep like flipping back and forth, <laughs> mm. just like that. Yeah, so right. Go back and forth and make it just be like, oh, sorry, I'll be right back. Oh, and then he spends like one minute with the other person, like, oh, sorry, I'll be right back, and that's to run across the street again. <laughs> Speaking of running, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the way, uh, well, the that, way that's, the that's way towards the end of the movie. Well, he runs oh, no, consistently. No, 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 every okay. time oh, he that's, runs anywhere, that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, his he's like a T Rex. His arms are like brought up to his uh, uh, ch- uh, chest, and he just kind of has his hands out. <laughs> I don't remember the character fan. running all dumb in like the, no. in the anime. I think it's something that they just did for the movie. Make, be really pansy it up, like trying yeah. to just, like, like you got to make this guy like look you're running pathetic. Like, I guess uh, like a girl or something. Yeah, 
it seems, it seems like they really gave him the direction, just like, just be really, like, feminine and not, like, you, you can't stand up for yourself and you don't run correctly. <laughs> yeah, it's actually one of the worst parts, I think, for the movie for me is that I, I see what they're going with, with that direction of, like, really selling that this guy's really awkward, doesn't know how to deal with social situations and everything else, I think is a little jarring, because everybody else is normal. Other than uh, the other guy who came prancing after him while now, running, I think that is just what the Swedish carrying a tambourine are like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Basically, his his goal in life is to be a fucking hipster. Because <laughs> there's this one guy who shows up who's all douchey, like, and he's like, "Oh my god, I wish I was just like him." Like, you have a terrible life goal, man. Yeah. You should stick with the death metal. He loves trendy stuff, like just really trendy, like popular light yeah. pop music stuff. Yeah, yeah. His apartment, um, <laughs> which does get trashed by his manager uh, because she is pretty awesome and knows how to deal yes. with uh, uh, adversity in a proper, uh, more socially acceptable way. As in putting out cigarettes on people's heads? Yeah, yeah. well, they stop him from complaining. Full of Ikea. Now, super <laughs> oh, popular Ikea, <laughs> uh, uh, IKEA uh, furniture. Uh, that he has spent forever picking out, but I'm pretty sure he just went to the Ikea in Tokyo and just, like, picked out a bedroom set. Yeah, yeah. He got looked the at a model set. room. It was, like, one model. <laughs> it was, like, this one was oh, right. from... Yes, that room set, I want that. <laughs> Probably <laughs> exactly what it's super trendy. Yeah. And it's yeah. Swedish, and I also worked at Ikea for seven years, so I, I can spot these things mm-hmm. pretty well. Yeah. We we have uh, a uh, Mr. Ikea the in the, Ikea in the audience. <laughs> That's right. Well, I would only be full on Mr. Ikea if I was also a Nazi. Uh, uh. Uh. Jokes. That was not a joke, that was a fact. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> a little more shenanigans, uh, him running around like a girl the whole time. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen very or many anime with uh, females that run the exact same way that uh, he does in this movie. <laughs> the, so we, we talked a lot about Nagishi. Really, really uh, a nervous kid. Can only deal with uh, things becoming Krauser. Where he, where he is full of confidence and is able to face the issue he's in, but not in a Good constructive way. way, because yeah. it's really just kind of like yelling at people, saying he'll kill them, uh, something else like that, and really causing the other person to, just, to run away out of his uh, uh, life. I think it's kind of like almost a deconstruction of like why people get into that kind of music in the first place. They like are running away from their problems, or they don't know how to like deal with it. Are you talking about Swedish pop? No, like when he goes crazy for like metal music, you know, like he turns into Krauser, right? And like he's kind of personifying like what the kids probably mostly feel when they listen to that kind of music. Well, I just say watching this makes me want to find these death metal clubs in Japan and go there because it looks like a pretty rockin' time. Just don't wear a skirt. <laughs> yes. All right, so other main characters, his bandmates, actually, they're really played yeah. down in the uh, live-action movie. You don't, learn, you don't learn anything about them. Yeah. Other yeah. than that the one we guy's d- a pervert. Mm. We know yeah. that because yeah. we've... Well, he just likes material, bloomers. Right? Yeah, just really likes bloomers. Yeah, he just stands there quietly. I think, like, half of his lines are just bloomers. But that that is his only line. I can't remember if he said anything No, no, else. he says, uh, give me back my bloomers. <laughs> oh, that's oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> As we've said in other ones, you know, you're taking a... This is a 10-volume... A 10 manga. It needs to be condensed down to a, um, a movie. They have cherry-picked certain parts from the beginning. It seems to be mostly a volume one and volume two uh, that goes into this. So, of course, they have to cut some parts out. Um, it is interesting to see the three band members as they are portrayed in the movie, where the uh, the drummer guy, very quiet, uh, his name is Camus. He, yeah, like, like we were saying, he just kind of talked about bloomers. He's a big fan of... Magical girl shows, which I'm not the biggest fan of those <laughs> ones, uh, but I think other people on our podcast group do really enjoy like Card Captor Sakura, and so they're all the equivalent of Camus, the weird <laughs> drummer guy. Uh... <laughs> I'm not hearing any dissension on this statement. The other guy, Jagi, is also um, very much just subdued, and you don't really see a lot from him. Um, and I would say he's probably the most different from the manga itself. Uh, where he is like shown just as fearful from their manager as Nagishi is, the main uh, character, but is more willing just to be like, yeah, we're in a band, it's awesome, let's do this, where Nagishi is like, eh, you know, I just want to play some just pop music, I want to run out of here, and 
I can't stand this music. I do like your Nagishi voice. Yeah. <laughs> that was very good. I think that was like the first scene, which I thought was kind of, I mean, it's kind of dumb as a scene, because why would he ever do this? Like, he's been in the band for a little while. That we, I think the first time we see, after their first like concert that we see as the audience, he's like, yeah, that was great. Like, the, the, the manager comes in like, yeah, you guys rock. That was awesome. And then he's just like, he I hate this, and I yeah. want to do this instead, and turns on like the sweet spot music. And you're like, why would you, like, what? <laughs> do you do this every single time, or like, why are you doing it now? I believe he does it every single time, and every single time they explain to you why he's still doing it, is because his manager is badass and yeah. beats him up. Uh, he She puts her cigarette out on his forehead, and then when he plays the music, she's like, Jesus, f- uh, what, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, oh, and then kicks fucking him. crazy guys. <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like that. <laughs> yeah, that's like actually what it is. That was not a sound bite from the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then just kicks him right in the, uh, uh, right around the, the crotch. Yeah. yeah, around the nuts. And just drops him. And just like, stop being a bitch. Yeah, and yeah. he's just like, okay, because he's a pussy. And, uh, um, like, there's another part where he tries to, like, evade his responsibilities of being Johannes Krauser II, and the manager shows up at his house, well, small, small apartment, because he lives in Tokyo, um, and in one of the weird departures from the manga, brings two dogs with her, where in the manga it was, like, two guys, like, two big burly guys, but apparently they couldn't find anybody in casting for that. What they did in the uh, uh, in the manga, which was they just tore his place up. Uh, the manager is like pushing him to the ground. He's like, "Oh, your clothes are terrible," and pulls out a box cutter because you know <laughs> Japanese people just carry box cutters with them. Well, she does because she's badass. Well, a lot of a lot uh, of yeah. Japanese it people seems carry. Like, there's a lot of anime where it's like people are attacking each other with box cutters. Like, where yeah. did they get them from? In America, <laughs> the we have guns. <laughs> yeah, in Japan, right. it's craft stores and. That's true. Because can you have knives like pocket knives in Japan? No, I think those are illegal. So that's, that's probably, probably the only reason. Not. Like, the one legal sort of cutting utensil you can get is box cutter. A cookie mm-hmm. knife. I mean, it might, I win. it might be illegal to carry around a cookie knife, but it wouldn't be a carry-around tool. It's inconvenient to carry around a cookie knife. I do all the time. <laughs> Anyways, she just cuts open all, like, all of his clothes and rips it off uh, uh, off his body and is like trying to pour alcohol down his face while smoking. and uh, or, Being a general badass. And wearing her shoes in the house. <gasps> okay. What? Actually, yeah, yeah, that part was annoying. I'm like, I don't like to leave that in my house. <laughs> <laughs> At least don't track dirt all over my house. But then seeing what she was about to do. Like, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And, that, that's the least of his worries. <laughs> and of course, since this is a gay hijink show, of course, that is when uh, his college romance comes in and sees him lying on the floor with the rock music playing. Being and, straddled by. by yeah, a girl with a short skirt. Yeah. He had a lot of uh, panty flashes in this one. And yeah. uh, uh, then, of course, he runs off and... He, it's one, one, again, one of those gag ones, yes. It's explained away. Classic mix up. Yeah, classic. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> a lot of times, Stacey comes home and I'm, there's a girl on top of me, mm. and I explain it away with a single sentence. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, I, she's the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> we like, own oh, our house. Oh, oh. <laughs> she's the real estate agent. Came back to. She's crazy, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure uh, everything was going okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time. All right, uh, what was that, Kenny? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know how to really work that in. The movie was two from 2008. It was a different time back then. <laughs> yeah, that explains it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of things to me explain with it. It was a different time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So actually, speaking of that, Jason was perplexed that there was what, uh, like a CD store. <laughs> Well, it was, uh, it was a comedy. Tower Records. I'll give you this. Oh, no, it was Tower Records. Yeah, again, 2008, but the couple Tower Records near or in the Portland metro area, well, they ta- closed down well, way Records before went, that. went out of business. Right. Like, so it's not really a, it's not a thing. But I think the Japanese one is not actually owned by the same people, so. But even if this was 2008 or 2016 or now, I am sure we can easily go to Tokyo and find a CD store. Yes. Yeah. This is how idol groups stay in business. Yeah, you go to book off and buy CDs. We saw them. They're all over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they'll have an idol group and like they'll release 
a different version of the same song with a different girl on the cover of each one. So you there could be like 12 different versions of the same song released. I think it's just because like online distribution hasn't caught on quite, uh, just due to the record, how the record right. business works in Japan, which is different than here. Well, so. and even even here, there's still places like FYE in the mall. That you can get CDs, but well, yeah, but it is there. But you know, going with the idol thing, it is not uncommon for a fan to buy multiple copies of the same uh, CD. Well, and true collectors buy at least three copies: one to not open, one to use. One to uh, distribute to other people to spread the uh, <laughs> spread the love. Yeah, yeah. And the seed. Yeah, gross. Yeah, exactly. And that's our gross business. That can, that goes into more of the fourth type of character. So you have Nagisha, the main character. You have his bandmates. You have the manager, and then you get into his fans. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, which are. Really devoted fans, um, very, very much into his uh, uh, music and the dream he's making. No music, no dream. Um, and actually, a lot of times the fans are the ones that are pushing the story forward because Nagishi will do something and the fans are like, oh, and like completely misconstrue what's going on and just insert <laughs> like a reasoning like, behind his yeah. actions. Good leaps of logic. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still a leap of logic. Your first assumption is always something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> like he he almost gets himself hung, but clearly that's super metal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, it, that that one is. There's no leap of logic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty metal. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, they cherry pick a lot of scenes and they kind of cut the scenes down. I w- wish they w- in, in the live action movie. I wish they would have. Maybe maybe just go with a fewer scenes and have the full scene in there because there is the one where he shows up at the amusement park because the, his love interest is going on a date with this... The douchey hipster. Yeah, the douchey hipster. And he kind of shows up and there is one of those Super Sentai shows uh, that you see and he kind of jumps out and starts you know, harassing them and uh, the kids think he, it's part of the show. He's, yeah. he's, he's the villain and so they like, go, go to fight him. But his fans are actually the actors. They are actually the, the Red Ranger. And yeah, Red, mm-hmm. Yellow, and uh, Blue Rangers. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, we, we can't like stop Lord Krauser. We have to help him. <laughs> yeah. he, Lord Krauser is clearly a better Rita Repulsa, and uh, the Power Rangers uh, join him instead. Yeah. yeah. And they I would. To run over and like headbutt the douchey... Uh, hipster guy, yeah, and uh, like chase him off while uh, uh, all the children are like running away screaming because <laughs> yeah. like their live action like little play got destroyed. Yeah. Yes, well, but the, the the manga did it a bit. I thought it was funnier where like some of the kids got into like oh it's Krauser and they're like head banging and stuff. So yeah, in the anime it's more like that too. There's like a, it's like the whole scene is a little more flushed out. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly, and I think that's the issue with the movie is that uh, uh, you know I think they should have spent more time fleshing out these scenes. Maybe doing a little bit less since they are cherry picking. Um, I don't think that they recognize him as being Krauser, but he starts singing a song. In the manga, what he does is he sees the girl he likes uh, with the hipster, and he's like, How dare you touch that female, you lust filled animal? And then he starts to uh, uh, move towards her, and the kids are all like, Oh, yes, um, uh, the Victory Three won't let anyone disturb the world peace. And uh, uh, then they proceed to start beating up each other and uh, 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 the producer. And then he starts singing the song. And maybe maybe we should put some of the songs in in here. Just, yeah, we can do that. Just yeah. splice them in there. But his, his songs are, Women, you are to confess your sins to these two freshly severed heads. As he's ripped the masks off some of the rangers. Here, All right, here we go. It's time for the full disclosure death sentence. You slut, I saw you on the Ferris wheel. You were having oral intercourse with that bastard. Don't deny it. Silence, silence, silence. The evil lord refuses to hear your words of deceit. A sow so filthy with sin like you deserves nothing less than the death penis. And then he proceeds to sing death penis, which goes, Stuff it, stuff it, in your anus, in your mouth. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, in the morning, in the night. Stuff it in your nose, in your ears. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. Spin the whore, spin the whore. And 
one of the panels is a kid rocking it out saying stuff it stuff it stuff it and his mother going Takun don't say things like that <laughs> well the kid learned that day yeah that a great death metal is better yeah. that may be a good time to bring up that the uh, movie is quite toned down uh, with the yeah. sex and violence references from the original source it's like uh, I wonder like how much maybe the studio had in trying to clean it up and make it have a positive message at the end I don't know why they bothered mm-hmm. I mean, if you're not going to make I mean, make it, then I mean, it's great. I, I I I still enjoy the movie, but at the same time, like from the source material, it is very much cut down. Yeah. I think you really need more need more about the source material to really enjoy this movie. But as a person who's never seen anything before and coming in this fresh, what do you think? I enjoyed the movie a lot. It uh, it definitely had a lot of comedic pieces to it that uh, kind of keeps you in it. I like rock music and like this as well so it kind of uh helps out uh i'm not necessarily sure if uh, somebody who is really into country or is overly adverse to death metal music would uh fully get into this but uh i think overall the movie itself is good well i yeah because i think we should talk about the farm scene like the you know Jack L. Dark and uh, Gene Simmons. Yeah, yet. exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. Really talking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, our, that was our mid-episode rating <laughs> scale break. Yeah, and, uh, we'll talk about it more. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we have the Gishi. We have the his fellow bandmates. We have his awesome manager. We have his devoted fans, and that kind of sets the uh, well, and also I guess also his the girl. Mm-hmm. His love interest, yeah. uh, who's really bland, doesn't contribute a whole lot other than saying that, oh, this music's just the worst, it's disgusting, I don't want to hear it. She's and the most basic person. She just loves hipsters. That's her one thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's it. And no music, no dreams. <laughs> yeah. It's true, In true. Movie, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, she serves as like a tying, like more as a story element to kind of tie things together. Uh, but the, 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 the villain, if you will, uh, is... Uh, a an American a death metal artist called Jack Jack Ildark. Yep, Jack Ildark, uh, which they were able to, for some somehow probably through the power of Johann Krauss of the second mm-hmm. to get Gene Simmons to play. Yes, <laughs> I guess. Well, Just, but, I mean, what was he doing in two thousand eight? Probably not. I think he was lot. doing a reality show at that time. Oh, I thought that was yeah, uh, Ozzy Osbourne. They all did a show. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, did his in like two thousand one. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. But no, Gene Simmons did one in like the late 2000s. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Either way, I'm sure he had. Well, he had enough free time to film like Four two five, scenes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, one in L.A. and then one where he uh, fights uh, uh, John Krauser the second, who has returned from the sojourn where he's really trying to find the why is he doing this. So he returns to this family farm. Uh, sees his, uh, his mother wearing the DMC shirt. Finds out his uh, kid brother is a ardent uh, uh, a fan of DMC, and struggles with like what DMC does because like his kid brother uh, uh, doesn't go to school, doesn't help around, calls his mother a bitch, and everything else. I, I think if you're gonna get any place close to a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Is is the scene here? This is what makes the movie sort of devolve devolve into like he needs to like realize is what he's up to, like what what he's doing is like for the greater good, and he needs to like go back and you know lead these kids into not being terrible people. Yeah, I mean he's he's telling them that you know I'm gonna kill your mother. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. Let me rephrase that. I fucked your mother, and I'm gonna fuck your father tomorrow, and then I'm gonna kill them all. I have no mother. I have no father. I've killed them all. He's got to take that and spin it into a very positive message to make sure that yes. these people still have hopes and dreams mm. and are productive members of society. So he teaches his brother how to actually do farm work. Yes. <laughs> that, I did find that part pretty funny where it's like, oh, you know, threshing the grass is preparing for cutting the throats of your enemies. Or, uh, oh, yes. Tending to the cows is really... Showing them who's master. Yes. Yeah. Tame, Tame the beast. beast. <laughs> Drive the tractor so you'll learn how to rob places and carjack. get away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And carjack. Yeah. And then like, he like, was like, oh, I went and completed college because how else are you going to uh, lord over everything uh, unless you've prepared yourself in all disciplines? 
that's probably the most fleshed out scene that was also taken from the manga. Yeah, in the manga that does happen. Like that yeah. whole thing happens where he like tries his best to like make his brother like not a bad person. Exactly, exactly. And then tells him that uh, he needs to get rid of his bleach blonde long hair and uh, go back to the uh, mushroom more, cut. The mushroom cut, the standard like Japanese like the equivalent of bowl cut. Yeah. Which he describes as a uh, the penis. Penis cut. Yeah. yeah, the public indecency cut. Yes. Um, and the most metal of all. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. The most metal of all haircuts is the bowl cut. The, the weirdest part is that as he's teaching his brother all these things, his mother sees him and just is like, okay, I guess this is what my oldest son is doing. I'm perfectly fine because he is making music, which was his dream, mm -hmm. and this is really what, what he wants to uh, be doing, even if Nagishi himself has not yet realized it. And that's a, this is the moment where he does. Like, he, right. he, he really, you know... His mother gives him kind of a pep talk, going, you know, you need to realize your dreams. He gets all this fan mail mm -hmm. and bloomers from Camus, the drummer. I think and that sold it for him. Yeah, he realizes that it's not super literal, and, like, all these people love the music and need him to still be making music because it's the one thing that gets him out of like, their depression or whatever. Exactly, exactly. Get, get, you know, get him outside, get him with people. You know, you get the closeness of society, and we're kind of talking about how Stacey now wants to go see a metal concert in Japan to see what it's like. Because, you know, Japan is a very restrictive, some would argue, like, stifling society where individuality is really kind of stamped down unless you can find, like, these other groups and then you kind of join them and that's how you can outlet. So you'll create a kind of your own little new group here, and that's what all of his fans have done with his music. Right. They give them their hopes and dreams through his music. No music, no dream. After he gets his pep talk, reads his fans' uh, um, letters and everything else, he gets back out of the boonies, and they show the whole scene of, you know, running to the train station, getting on the, like, the 1960s rail uh, uh, way that cell functions perfectly fine because it's Japan, to get to the bullet train, to make his way up to uh, Tokyo, and then he uh, uh, proceeds to, like, run through the streets of Tokyo where groups of his fans are waiting for him, and, and they all join him Forrest Gump style. <laughs> I, I think Forrest Gump got off of this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. instead of getting off at the station he needed, apparently he stopped somewhere like halfway across Tokyo yeah, and right, got yeah. off the train there. Okay, okay. Uh, I know you're bad at maps. There's only uh, three stations that <laughs> the uh, Shinkansen stop at. It's not going to be a 1 0. No, but he, because could, those he only can get off the train. He can, he the can transfer and, and get, get to another to train. He, he is That's not too, metal. Uh, uh, driven at this point in time. He's <laughs> too pumped up. Coming from people who like initial D and can't realize how pumped up you get that you're just going to kind of do what you're going to uh, do. He, without mul he drove the Shinkansen. He, why didn't he, couldn't he have multi track drifted all the way to the stadium? Yes. Because <laughs> at the same time, there's buildings in the way. Not, mm. not, not, no, 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 no. <laughs> he runs on an alleyway. Not on a rip. I'm saying if he multi track drifted, it would have been fine. Like in the subway. Like, get there. <laughs> just get there. Well, just get there. Well, he did. He yeah, did. They dug just tunnels get there. all over the. He the ran Tokyo. there. He, he sprints there. They all, uh, you know. Or, Everybody uh, converges uh, on him. Exactly. Meanwhile, his band is uh, keeping uh, uh, up appearances. Keep They're playing the music. Everyone's like, oh, where's Johannes? Krauser the second, Gene Simmons as Jack Hill Dark pops out, plays some music, gets a bull on, uh, well, a buffalo, yeah. but not like a bison. The death buffalo. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just a cow. <laughs> yeah, it's a cow. <laughs> it's like a cow that they put some spikes on its yeah. ankles. Well, and, and, and they cg and... the eyes to red. Oh, that's yeah, true. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a metal cow. Yeah, yeah. And, and it charges and attacks uh, uh, his bandmates, and they cower in fear behind the uh, drums. And then he, he shows up, and he makes his big speech, jumps down, gets attacked by the uh, bull. Subdues it. With the bed, He's not bad. He's, he's not a sheep. He's a lord of uh, darkness and uh, uh, night. Yeah. It's bay, bay. It's, like, it's a common sound. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't grow up on a farm. <laughs> she doesn't know how this works. <sighs> Anyways, subdues the beast and then gets into this uh, uh, battle with Jack Hill Dark, uh, where he takes on Jack's most famous song, "Fucking Hill Palace." Best exactly. name uh, ever. It's fucking, well, the album's called like the "Fucking Hill Palace." Fucking Ham Palace. King, uh, the anthem of the king, or something like that. <laughs> yes. I'm sure the queen would not approve, but fucker. So basically, "Fucking Hill Palace" 
either the song or a song from that album is you just say the word fuck a bunch of times in a row. And in the manga, it was Jack and Krauser going, they were both saying fuck, but in this movie, it was just uh, Gene Simmons playing the guitar while Krauser was doing all the fucking. Yeah, and so uh, you can hear him saying, yeah, there's like, fuck, 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 fuck. And while well, uh, Gene Simmons plays the guitar, and then uh, increasingly point, faster. Like, increasingly yeah. faster, <laughs> and eventually, like, cuts his fingers. Because <laughs> yeah. he's yeah. rocking so hard that his fingers get cut. Yeah, and... yeah, and then um, he hits, he, he turns on all of the, like, stage effects and stuff like that, and then somehow there's an explosion. Yeah. And they get knocked back, and they're unconscious, and the fans are cheering for each of them to see who stands up, and uh, uh, Jack Dark gets up first, and they're, oh my god, his crowds are dead, you know, maybe he shouldn't get up, and, uh, um, and then he stands up, and then... I think the weirdest part of the movie for me is the second explosion that just happens like just at this moment. Oh yeah. Um, because it would have been better if they had like gotten into like another fight, like saying uh, uh, how many rapes they can say in uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, which is eleven. Yes, Krauser's record was ten, but then he upped it to eleven. Yes. Mm. Not in the movie, in the manga. Yes. Um, and then again, he's sitting there and he hears uh, everybody, uh, uh, well, his fans, his diehard fans, are sitting there, quiet. Like, oh my god, what just happened? Are they alive? It's a metal tinker bell. Exactly. <laughs> and they start slowly chanting, Go, go to DMC. DMC. Go to DMC. Go to DMC. Go to DMC. And in the background is college love, Aikawa, realizes at that moment that he has achieved his dream, even while he, she might not like the music that a lot of people do. And she starts saying, go, go to DMC. In this, like, little voice, like, go to DMC. Yeah, that's also the weirdest DMC. part. Like, it didn't really blend well with that. No, but she loved it, so it was fine. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then Johannes Krauser uh, gets up and then mm-hmm. uh, triumphantly uh, becomes the lord of all metal. Yeah. Rises from the dead, is reborn <laughs> to sing Swedish <laughs> pop music. Sweet baby. Yeah, he gets up from his like giant metal battle <laughs> where he defeated like the main metal man <laughs> from America, and then starts singing his pop song. Well, no, no, it's even more than that. He has presented the guitar of Jack L. Dark. Oh, yes, that's true. To represent that, he's like, he the won. torch has been passed. The yeah. torch has been passed. He's now the Lord of All Metal. And then uh, plays his Swedish pop music. That's his. Uh, um, he, you know, but it's been the motif this whole time. He wanted to play. Yes. And yeah. everyone gets quiet and is like, "What's happening?" Yeah. And but then, then, and as then usual, everyone the, goes, "Yeah." The devil is torturing us. Yeah, they love it. They think <laughs> yes. that he's like torturing us more. And like, oh no. <laughs> as usual, the fans have an explanation. It's like, ah, oh, he wants us to suffer more. Oh, we must endure. Don't cover your ears. Like, <laughs> oh yes, yes, of course. <laughs> And, of course, the real hero of the story is the manager who flicks a cigarette from across the crowded uh, concert hall right into his face, snapping him back into the Krauser mode, uh, uh, where he then uh, sings the uh, core song of the group. So that's the guy. So that's the guy. Sayo. <laughs> and uh, this actually might be the most spoily uh, uh, movie uh, review we've ever done. We just completely tell the whole plot. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. We did. But, you know, so... Spoiler alert. After we told all the spoilers, oh, by the way, there's going to be spoilers that we already told you the whole plot of the movie. Yeah, well, no, 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 not all of it. Most of it. Well, the plot. We told the plot, but not the gags. This is a gag show. That's the bigger thing. There's more stuff in there. Um, I would definitely watch this movie. Yes. Um, I would personally give this movie eight death penises out of ten. So then I will be uh, using (laughs) four uh, eaten uh, bat heads out of five. I will give it seven fucking ham palaces out of ten, simply because while I did enjoy it, I feel it kind of got watered down from the original source material, plus adding the, you know, hopeful message of the no music, no dream wasn't really a necessary addition in my opinion, so... That's it, why I knock it, it down. It drove the movie. <laughs> it did. Nikishi drove the movie. No. Or rather, no, Krauser. No, Krauser no drove the movie. Yeah. Krauser the drove, drove the, the train. <laughs> no music, no dream. Literally carjacked the movie and drove it. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And they raped its mother. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I'll have to give it eight bloody Gene Simmons fingers out of ten. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I also agree with Stacey that it wasn't quite as good as like 
Well, I've only seen the anime, but... Mm. So, I guess in the order of it, it's probably the manga, the most detailed in the anime, mm. than the movie. But the anime still had a lot of detail and, like, stories, so... Didn't have as much as that. But, in, it, but it, as its own, like, its own thing, totally fun and good, and you should watch it, and it's, it was really fun. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you for joining us for uh, Real Japan. This is Jason. Uh, this is Josh. This has been Stacy. This is Levin. If you enjoy our uh, uh, full of spoilers uh, talks, uh, please go to AnnieBroseCreative.com and check out some of the other stuff we have on the site. Can we get one more reading from the sacred text? Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes, of course. I was born a murderer, came out of the womb, and killed mother, then murdered my father, said, Gah, why were you ever born? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Satsugai, yeah, Satsugai woo, shubi doo up doo up Yesterday your mom, shananana, today your dad, do 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 And then the manager runs in and says, what the fuck did you do with my clip boner-inducing lines? <laughs>